going on guys your boy Jay back at it new video um, first new content of the year and I'm here with my boy Lenny a lot of you guys ask where I've been grabbing a lot of my vintage tees Lenny's actually been the guy that for the last year has been helping me find a lot of the stuff that um, you see me wearing on Instagram and stuff and in the videos but we're out here in Cali um, gonna be actually hanging out with Eric from Band LA as well and then we're gonna go check out my man Mauricio Mauricio owns a brand called Artillier and Repairs and we're gonna kinda get to tell his backstory how he's been able to blow up his brand over the last five years and get it all the way up into Bergdorf Goodman and, and a bunch of other, brand, uh, other major retailers and we're gonna check out the archives and possibly create a uh, collaboration so Lenny's gonna help me out with that Eric's gonna help me out with that and Joni's also here so yeah we're gonna head over there here in a little bit and uh, sit back enjoy this video and uh, make sure to hit like comment subscribe for me one time wanted to come in today maybe sit down with you yeah. a little bit yeah. tell your story about the brand and and then maybe like you know look at archives and maybe possibly design something together <laughs> five years ago we started this thing you and your wife it's a yes? hobby okay so we are we have a consulting company and uh, woke up one day and said there's something weird with the clothing the industry of clothing we produce way too much. We have we waste all the time. I, I was always a fan of vintage and and just archival pieces. It was always a passion, but I didn't know exactly my position in this in the planet of clothing. And I realized that I wanted to do say that the first idea was can we make a brand without manufacturing anything? So say, what if we source? change, transform, reimagine, upcycle, whatever you want to call it, and then in a, in, a, in a way where it's represented by themes, by stories, by concepts. Right. And then I realized that I did not want another brand. I don't, give, I, don't, I don't want to be another brand. I want to be a service to the industry because for me, responsible thinking and creativity needs to come together. It cannot be only one. Right. If it's only creativity, you're an artist. So you shouldn't be thinking about commerce, right? right. As an artist. But if you're thinking about a, an issue, a problem that you want to solve, then you need you need to have a social a commitment, responsible manufacturing, call it whatever you want it, and then creativity because we make one of a kind pieces. Right. And we started like that. So we have no gender, no season. No, nothing. Basically, it's an it's a it's a it's an empty space where right. you come in and you say, hmm, this, this, that, and that. Can we do that? And if we can, yes. If we cannot do it, we're still friends. What are some stores that your products are in? I saw I saw it for the first time Berg, in Bergdorf. Bergdorf. Berg Bergdorf has been a fan of ours. Bruce Pask. Okay. The fashion director of Men's is a he has been a fan forever since the beginning and uh, Blue and Green okay yeah and then we have Ron Herman we are we are in about 15 shops in the United States maybe we have another 20 in Japan between Japan Korea Hong Kong Singapore and then we have another maybe 12 15 in the that's in amazing the, the five years We source whatever we can find. Like sometimes it's a piece like this, sometimes it's like three yards, sometimes it's one and a half. So all so this is probably the hardest thing to find, according to this idea that we have. Sometimes Cargon LST, that's the name of our our pants. There is a reason why it's LST because we use yeah, yeah. funkadelic fabrics. Yeah. We use 
flowers with mushrooms with uh, bright colors all together to kill the camouflage that's the story This is crazy. It's gonna be fun to like pick out a couple of silhouettes and like say, all right, let's do this and that and this. And this guy's the man, bro. I appreciate like just seeing like how it's created. I'm taking you to a very discreet office where I keep my archive. So we just checked out our Atelier Repair uh, pretty much production and where they house all of their like uh, upcoming seasons. Now we're going to get to look at the archive. And when I met Mauricio a couple weeks ago at Project in Vegas when we were doing this stuff with Nautico, one of the things he said is, man, you got to come check out the archive. I've been collecting, I want to say he told me almost 40 years. So. He's been collecting for 40 years, and this is the room that has all this stuff, right? And now keep in mind, he's feeding 30 stores plus an online. You gotta have a lot of stuff to be able to do this. So this is definitely probably gonna be one of the most overwhelming things I've ever shown you guys. So let's go take a look. something really special now. This is a, a 1922 Levi's. 1922 Levi's? Wow. just amazing to see like all this stuff right I mean you're looking at history history like what fashion was really wasn't even used for fashion back then and for Maurizio to you know over the course of his lifetime to dedicate to this craft like think about the it's the same thing as as a reseller and sneakers the time, the energy, the effort. When he started, there was no internet. So can you talk about what it was like maybe 20 years ago trying to buy this? Like, how were you communicating with people? Now it's different, right? You have you have the internet, you have you know the ability to FaceTime with someone. What was that like? <laughs> so there is a culture of antiques, okay. and then there is a culture of vintage, okay. which is, all things considered, it's a modern, a modern value right. that we give to things that have been around for, say, 100 years, okay. and, as opposed to 300 years or something like this. It was for a few people almost like a religion, like a cult. You know, people were right. looking for something interesting. Japanese were crazy about Americana at that time, so we. Um, there was the second hand crowd that wanted used. The word vintage was at its infancy. Right. And then and then it became vintage became used with value. So all of a sudden people that were into denim understood 
selvage, the red line, the white oak fabrics, and and then and then it became apparent that things from the 40s and, and 50s and 60s were durable goods. Vintage with value really became um, trendy for sure. It became an obsession for more people when uh, fashion designer all of a sudden they discover old design and, and the vintage has inspired every single denim company you can think of and every single outerwear company you can think of. So when you think about the Diesel and Replay and G-Star and any, any denim company you can think of, if you go to their design studio, they have vintage stuff. Right. You know. Yeah, we were just at Nautica last week and we got to look at their archive and surprisingly, it wasn't that much in there. Right, it's uh, Steve Mc McSween, which is a gentleman that I'm going to introduce you to, because I I talked to both, and I think there's definitely a play there for you. So Steve is uh, the VP of uh, design for Nautica in the in the United States. Great guy, He's actually who we're working with at Nautica to create. Lenny and I went last week and got to play around in the archives and pick about 20 pieces that we're giving you know, essentially what we think it should like look like. So should be great, but pairing him up and letting him look at Nautica history and bring it back would be phenomenal. Yes. The new format of retail that works currently is outsourcing your spaces like a Selfridges. I see or, yourself as a real estate person. Yeah. You provide a space, beautiful, and then you curate some. Correct. And then you allow the people you like to come in and make it even more exciting. Yeah. So it's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm very excited as to what's going to come um, over the next couple of months and years, and then building the relationships with yourself and, and uh, hopefully getting the opportunity to create some along the way and it, it, it's gonna be great. You have an ally. I have an ally? Yeah. I'm, I'm game for this. Awesome. So let's see, let's see what we can build. Awesome. Oh great to God, hear. Cool. <laughs> well that does it for our video. We're gonna go buy some stuff, I think for me and Joni, a little me bit. Too. And then we're going to talk a little bit off camera. <laughs> but guys, I appreciate you sticking around. Uh, much love to Mauricio for giving us an opportunity you, to, uh, you know, invade his space and uh, see the process. I'll catch you guys on the next one.